is an example video for where we're going to use the alternative formula for the derivative. I'm just going to go through a bunch of different examples. So we're going to find the derivative of these three functions using the alternative formula for the derivative, which is listed here. And you can compare that to this formula if you'd like. So you can pause the video, of course, if you need to review this. But this is specifically the formula that we're going to use. And then we will compare it to the original formula just to kind of get a sense of when would you want to use this. Okay, so let's start by finding the derivative of this first function. So remember, the this is going to be the limit as z approaches x of f of z minus f of x over z minus x. Okay, so if I go ahead and I plug all of this in, I get z cubed minus, oops, z squared minus x cubed minus x squared, all of this over z minus x. So I will tell you that it's best if you actually pause the video and try to see if you can figure this out on your own because this problem is actually a little bit tricky. There, there is a specific trick to it that you have to use to do this. So I highly recommend you pause the video and think about it for a moment and then hit play when you're ready for a hint. So the hint that I want to give you is that, so you, you might be thinking, oh, I'm going to factor this and I'm going to factor this. And what you'll find is if you try to just factor this as this is, you're actually not going to really be able to, to do much with this problem. You're not going to be able to cancel anything out. So let me give you a hint of how do you figure out what do you want to actually do to this problem. So if you look at the denominator, you probably have a sense that you would like to cancel out the denominator. That's usually one of our goals when we're working on limit problems or when we're working on derivative problems. And so if you look at this, if you just try to factor this as is, right now, this is just in terms of z's, this is just in terms of x's, but the denominator is in terms of z and x. So if you're trying to factor this, you actually probably need to co-mingle your, your z's and your x's together. So let me make a little space. And so let me just show you kind of what I mean by that now. So if I take z cubed minus x cubed and then z squared plus x squared. So the question now is, can you factor in this way? And so the answer is yes, you can. So if you need a moment to think about that, maybe pause again. So I will show you how to actually do this now. So first, let me factor out negative one from this second part. So this becomes z squared minus x squared. Okay, and you'll see why I did that in a moment. So I need space again. And now you can see, so this factors as the difference of cubes and this factors as the difference of squares. So if I go ahead and I factor this and, and pause the video if you need to take a second to look up those formulas. So this will factor as z minus x and then z squared plus zx plus x squared. And then the second part, let's see, I actually need a little more space. I'll move this a little to the left. And so now the second part factors as z minus x, z plus x, and all of this was divided by z minus x. So now if you look at this, this has a z minus x, this term has a z minus x, so those will both cancel out with the z minus x down here. So we can actually now make this cancellation. So what I'm left with is going to be this limit as z approaches x of z squared plus zx plus x squared, and then minus z minus x, and that's it, right? The denominator actually dropped out. So now I can go ahead and evaluate this limit. So wherever I see an, a z, now I can replace it with an x. So this is going to become x squared plus x squared plus uh, x squared minus x minus x. So all of this equals 3x squared minus 2x. So that would be your actual derivative. Okay, so that's my derivative. And I just want to take a second just to compare this to the other way we could have done this. So let me clear space one more time. And what if we used the original definition of the derivative? So I think actually using the alternative formula here is, is pretty convenient because if you think about trying to actually do this, 
So what you would have to do is x plus h to the third, and then this is minus x plus h squared, and then this is gonna be, oops, this is gonna be minus x cubed minus x squared, all of that over h. So I think this really just comes down to a thing of preference. Um, I personally just, I would probably not wanna have to actually foil all of this out. But if you foil it, or I guess in this case it wouldn't be foil, it would just be multiplying this together three times. That's just a lot of work. So there's a lot of stuff to multiply here. And the more stuff you have to multiply and add and subtract, the more likely you are to make a mistake. So the other one was just like, we, we just had to cleverly figure out how to factor. So I think you could make an argument for either way, whether you wanna use this formula or the other one. But I kind of think that the alternative formula would have been just slightly less stuff to write down and less likely to make a mistake um, as long as you could be clever with it. So this one just has more kind of work you have to go through. So just comparing the two. Okay, so moving on to this next one. So we want to find the derivative again. So I'm going to go ahead and write out the alternative formula here. If I could get my pen to work. There we go. So I've got the limit as x I mean, as z approaches x of f of z minus f of x over z minus x. So this is going to be the limit as x approaches z of 1 over z plus 3 minus 1 over x plus 3, all of this over z minus x. Now, for this particular problem, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to clear out the denominators. And there's more than one way to do this, but I will tell you my preferred way, which is just to clear out the denominators right away. So what I like to do is I like to find the LCD of all fractions. So the two fractions that we have here, the, the LCD will be z plus 3 and x plus 3. So I need to multiply both the top and bottom here by this LCD as shown. And so now when I do this, as I distribute this into each part of the parentheses, so here the z plus 3 is going to drop out, so I'm just going to be left with x plus 3, and then vice versa over here. So let me clear some space. Actually, I think I have just enough space to do this. So let's see, I've got the limit as z approaches x. So this is going to leave me with x plus 3 minus z plus 3 over z minus x. Okay, so now I'll clear some space. And looking at this now, so now I realize that I forgot to multiply by these, thing, these things. So z x plus 3, z plus 3. Okay, so now we're good to go. So now I can finish simplifying the top. So the top, let's see, the threes are going to drop out, so I'm just left with x minus z over z minus x and then x plus 3, and then z plus 3. And so now I can actually cancel these two things out if I factor negative 1 out of the top. So if I do that, so I factor negative 1 out, so then I can flip the order of the top. And then I've got x plus 3, z plus 3. And so now I can cancel out those um, z minus x's. So Let's see, I think I got just enough space to write this in. So this is negative one over, let's see, can I, can I give myself enough space? Negative one over x plus three and z plus three. So now I'll clear some space. Okay, so now I can go ahead and take the limit of this actually, because I'm not gonna get a zero in the denominator. So this is gonna equal negative one over x plus three and then x plus 3. So this ultimately equals negative 1 over x plus 3 squared. So that would be my derivative in this case. And so once again, if we just wanted to compare that to the other method, so now trying to use the, the first definition. So if I try to just set this up and plug everything in, so if we just think through what would we actually have to do for this, this would be 1 over x plus h plus 3 minus 1 over x plus 3, and then all of this over h. 
So I think for, for this particular one, it would have been really the same amount of work. You'd still have to use the same technique to solve this. So it totally doesn't matter which formula you want to use in, in this case. Um, they would be equally difficult. Okay, so moving on to this last one. So I need to take the limit as z approaches x of f of z minus f of x over z minus x. So I'll go ahead and plug all that stuff in. So this becomes 2 plus the square root of z minus, let's see, minus 2 minus the square root of x. I'll just go ahead and write the minus sign there and distribute it. All of this is over z minus x. Okay, so I can see just by looking at this that this is going to become the square root of z minus the square root of x over z minus x. So you have two ways now that you can handle this. Oops, I forgot the z, the x here. Okay, so you have two ways that you can handle this. So you can either try to use the conjugate, which would be totally fine here. So the conjugate, I'll, I'll just mention what that is. I've talked about this in a lot of other videos. So you can multiply the top and bottom by this. But I want to show you another shortcut, another way that you could do this actually, that is a little bit faster in this particular instance. So you can use a conjugate or you could actually recognize that the bottom can be factored. So if I, let's see, I'll write, I'll write this in another color. So z minus x can actually factor as the square root of c minus the square root of x times, let's see, I'm running out of room, not managing my space very well today, square root of z minus the square root of x, and then the square root of z plus the square root of x. So this actually can be factored using the difference of squares. This is kind of a creative way to factor this. And obviously it's a lot faster. So um, I'm actually gonna just use this, this technique here just because I just brought it up. But like I said, you could also use the conjugate. It totally doesn't matter. Um, more than one way to do a lot of these problems. So I'll clear some space. And I'll rewrite this as the limit as z approaches x of the square root z minus the square root of x. And then we'll just use this little shortcut. So sometimes this is this is obvious that you can factor it and other times it's not. And so when it's not, that's usually when you wanna use the conjugate. But in this case, I think it's not too bad to factor this. So this becomes the limit as z approaches x of one over the square root of z plus the square root of x. So now we can evaluate this. So this is gonna be one over the square root of x plus the square root of x. So ultimately this is one over two times the square root of x. And so that's gonna be my derivative in this case. And so actually if you try to use um, the x plus h method, so the other definition, you would still use, you, you would probably actually wanna use just the conjugate there. Um, I think you could also factor it, but it, so it'd still be about the same amount of work. So sometimes the alternative formula is more convenient and other times it doesn't really matter. So it just, it totally depends on the problem. And of course, there's always more than one way to do the problem. So maybe one way makes more sense to you and other another way makes more sense to me. So you just have to kind of play around with it to get really used to it. So that'll cover it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.